Welcome back to another LMMS tutorial. In this video, we're going to be learning more about the piano roll editor. Uh, so we're going to be composing uh, music and we're actually going to be recording from using a MIDI keyboard or using our keyboard on the computer if you don't have a MIDI keyboard. So we can record in real time to get those notes in rather than clicking and creating them like this like we did in the last video. So to get started, I actually want to close out of a few of these windows. We'll just have just our song editor open. And I'm going to clear out what I just did here. So we click and go clear this track so it starts over. And I'm going to remove the rest of these. And then I'm just going to double click in here. So we're under triple oscillator is the instrument we're using now. I'm just going to double click and it brings up our piano roll. And if we press, while this is open, if we just press some keys on our keyboard, like the, the Y or the U key, we see it lights up on the keyboard, and as long as we're pressing it, it'll play that sound. So if you don't have a MIDI keyboard plugged in, you can just do it that way. So the keys are mapped, uh, sort of like the same pattern you would play on a piano keyboard, a MIDI keyboard. It's mapped that way. So go ahead and press some keys and get familiar with what the layout is. The bottom keys, it starts out lower to high, so if you press like A or Z, it's like very, very low. And then the higher keys, like Q, W, start getting higher. So there's kind of two octaves stacked on top of each other on the keyboard. Play with that. Get familiar with how those layouts work. Uh, and then we're actually going to record. I'm going to try and record a song here. So to start recording, we just click record up here. And it's a good idea to check on this metronome. I'll tell you why. Because if we don't do the metronome, we just click recording. Oh, the playhead's going away. And if we start to record a song, the problem is... Uh, it's gonna, our notes are gonna be in between different bars. So I started playing and recording this, and I, as I hit, I hit record and just played some keys on my keyboard, and it recorded those notes that I played, but some of them are different timing, like this is a longer note than this one, and they're in between different beats. If we see, this is beat one, so this should be kind of right here and this should be longer. So we could come in and manually adjust them, but it would have helped if we select this metronome and then hit, uh, hit record. We see it plays a metronome sound there. So metronome can help. And then also bringing the tempo down from 140, if I just left click and drag this down, or I can double click, let's take it down to like 60. And then we can actually, uh, I'm gonna right click and delete all of these notes that I did. So it's kind of starting over. Now if I hit record, I'll hear my metronome. It's also playing much slower, so it'll give me a, a better chance to actually record more accurate notes. So let's hit record again, and I'll try this over again. So that's much better. I see I was able to get it a lot more accurate, and I can hit the stop key. And so now I actually have this much better. Now I can put it back up to 120 if I want to, or 140 where it was. And I have a nice Mary Had a Little Lamb melody going on there. Okay, some of these other keys I want to show you on the piano rule, or tools that we have. By default, we've been using the draw mode tool. It's always been in draw mode. I, sh I showed you we can erase notes by just right clicking and that note will go away. So right click. There's another way we can make notes go away and that's by using the erase tool. So when we're in erase mode, then we can just left click on anything in erase mode and it disappears. Uh, there's also the selection tool. So we hover over and any tool, if you're not sure, just hover over and it tells you what it is. So this is select mode. So it lets us select. We can select a certain note or we can hold down with a left mouse clicker and select as many notes as we want. Uh, and then while they're selected, we can do things like if I hit the delete key right now, it will delete all these. If we want to move them, like I, let's say I want to move these so they start at bar one, I just left click and select everything. And then I have to go back to my draw mode and get to this little move icon. Then I can left click and I can actually move this whole selection back to bar one. So now everything will be happening on bar one. I could also transpose it. So if I left click, I can drag it down and have it be down here instead. I can also, if I go to the end, it doesn't work well with these, this selection, but I could make all these notes either a lot shorter or a lot longer. You see that? 
So it kind of relatively resizes them. So anyway, that's the selection tool. Um, we can also, so now everything's still selected, but I could select individual notes. If I select this one and I want to do these ones, I can hold down the shift key and select only a certain few notes without doing my selection window. Now these three are selected. I can make just these ones uh, come back to this draw mode and I can make these ones just longer or shorter. Or I can hit the delete key and just delete those notes. If I, hit, if I didn't want to delete them, I can hit control Z and bring those notes back. Um, what else? Okay, so I want to show what some of these other things do. Did I talk about this in the last video? I forget. But uh, anyway, we have this. Uh, if, if you ever want to learn what these things are, you can actually just click on the uh, information icon up here. It might be a question mark or an I for you. Then you can hover over and just click and it tells you what it is. So this thing's like tells us whatever the, the type of note we're inserting is going to be the size of the last note we modified. So what that means is if I click here, our note is this length. If I make it this long and click a new note, the new note will be that same length. So whatever the length of the last note I was working with was, it'll be that length. Otherwise, we could use a drop down and we could say, hey, every time I left click, make it make a quarter note. Or I can say, make it a half note. Or I can say, make it a 30 second note. So it's teeny tiny. So that's kind of how that works. All right, control Z, undo a bunch of those. Do, 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 do. I'm hitting control Z a bunch of times to undo all this. And then uh, as far as scales go, so we can, if I press down on my keyboard now, one, one good thing for using the recording like I did is you can press and create chords. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound super good with this instrument, but you can hold down multiple keys at once and while you're recording to get chords. There's also a section here for chords. So if we just click and we want to do um, a major chord, we just select this under major. And then wherever we click, if I click up here on C right here, it'll actually create a major chord. I'm gonna change this back to uh, quarter notes. So if I click now, it creates a C chord right here. So see that's a whole C chord. If I want, and it's a C major. So whatever note you first click on is what it'll create. So I clicked on C, so it did a C major. If I want to do a C minor chord, I can just change it to, uh, where was my minor? Minor, and I click C, and now it's, it'll create a minor chord. If I want to do, and there's all, you know, every different variations of chords we can have. It'll create that version of the chord, we can play. And these sound terrible, I'm sorry, it's you know, like super distorted just because of this instrument and the way I have my sampling set up. But different, you know, if we, we had a different instrument that would sound a lot better. We can come down here. But that's the way it works with the, with the chords, you probably get the idea. Right now, if you say no chord, then it just does a single note, which is what we've normally been doing. Uh, this Q just toggles how large the grids are. I don't know if you can tell in this video, but the grid size changed. So now when this is on like quarter, and I try to move this note around, it'll only move around in quarter note increments. More extreme would be whole note, or whole, uh, yeah, whole bar, actually, what is this? Yeah, whole note increments. So it's like the whole bar is the only place it can move. And if I make it more granular, like down to 164th, then we can really, you know, fine tune where this is gonna go in. So if you're not super familiar with music and timing of notes, that might be a little hazy to you. Just by default, it's on 116. That's probably a good place to leave it. Uh, then down here, we have note velocity. So how loud that note is. And if we click it a second time over here, we can control the panning. So what ear that note appears in, in stereo, if it's coming out the right side or the left side of the, of the, of the uh, speaker. I apologize, it's getting so distorted and grainy. Um, that's just this instrument we're using. But... Uh, yeah, that's really what I want to show you with a piano roll. Go ahead and play with that. Oh, one more thing I'll show is this button here is to enable the loop points. So right now, if we have it just set here, it'll only loop back. I'm going to erase some of these so it's not so ugly sounding. But this will loop just this first bar over and over again. That's still ugly. But if we want to loop this to the end of the second bar, we can come over here and up here in the top and right click 
it'll change this. So right click sets the end point and middle mouse wheel click sets the start point of the loop. So if we want to just loop here, we just click and it'll loop the second bar only. Does that make sense? And that's it's the same way that it works with the story editor as well. It also has the same icon to control loop points and we can do the same thing. It controls it the same way so we can just loop back certain parts of the bar. Uh, so I hope that's kind of shed some light on how to use this piano roll, how you can use your keyboard as a MIDI keyboard, record in real time. Um, oh, we didn't touch on this, but there's also a cut copy. So while we have our selection, if we want to repeat a certain thing, we can select them all and we can cut them, then repaste them over here in a different bar. Or we can copy them and paste them in every bar if we just really like the way this, we want a repeating pattern over and over. So you can do these icons, cut, copy, and paste as well. Well, I appreciate you watching this video. I'm going to end it here. Uh, in the next videos, we'll talk about different instrument tracks, I think, and some, getting familiar with some of these different instruments. But uh, in the meantime, leave your comments, questions below. Uh, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video.